let's have a little fun, shall we? If you are like me and you love everything Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks, and pretty much anything animated, you probably also fell in love with Zootopia. So let's tie Zootopia and chemistry together and practice some limiting reactants and percent compositions, blast from the past, and percent yields, since we just learned about percent yields. By the end of this video, you should be able to recall how to calculate percent compositions, how to calculate limiting and excess reactants, and then use that information to calculate yields, all within the context of Zootopia. In the movie Zootopia, you have Judy Hopps, that's this cute little bunny right here, get it? Hopps, cause she's a bunny and she hops, ha. <laughs> and Nick Wilde, that's this fox right here who looks so enthusiastic that the bunny is hugging him. And she calls him out as a bunny cop on his tax evasion. So if Nick, the fox, makes $125,000 annually by repurposing popsicle sticks that he essentially gets for free, Free, and the taxes he should be paying on said amount are $28,000, what is his percent yield if he were to actually pay his taxes? So if we recall, our percent yield equation is as follows. We have our actual over theoretical all times 100. That is our percent yield equation. So what we need to do is say, okay, well, theoretically, he should be bringing home 125,000 annually, which he was from Popsicle Sticks because he wasn't paying his taxes, but in this problem we're assuming that he's going to pay his taxes. So, especially now that the uh, bunny rabbit called him out on the tax evasion, he doesn't want to go to Fox Jail for not paying taxes. So what we're going to do is plug in 125,000 as our theoretical denominator, and our actual is this value, what he should be paying, subtracted out of his total amount. Because those are the taxes he should be paying, therefore he shouldn't be taking it home in his paycheck. So the actual amount should be 125k, or 1000, minus 28k, which gives us $97,000, is what he's actually taking home when he pays his taxes. And we're going to put 97,000 as the numerator and 125,000 as the denominator for our theoretical. That's going to be divided and then multiplied by 100 to give us our percent yield. When I do this calculation, I end up with a decimal initially of 0.776 times 100 moves that decimal over to, so I have 77.6. So Nick Wilde's percent yield, if he were to pay taxes, would no longer be 100%, but 77.6%. Here's just a little background before we jump into some more chemistry. In the movie, there's a flower called Night Howler, which is actually a real thing. It's a flower from the crocus variety, meaning that it has a bulb instead of roots. And there's this chemist, this ram chemist, his name is Doug, and he takes those Night Howler flowers and he extracts a chemical from that plant. And that extracted chemical is a neurotoxin in mammals. And yes, that's a real thing, so not just in the movie, but for like real life, if you extract that toxin, which I'm not sure if I'm actually going to pronounce this correctly, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Colchicine? Colchicine? Colchicine. Who knows? This one right here is what's extracted from the night howler flower. So in order to extract that poison, that neurotoxin, the following equation is hypothetically used. Now, I kind of generated this equation from the best of my knowledge by using a chemical called isobutanol, which is a typical chemical used for extractions, the night howler flower chemical equation there. That is the actual chemical equation of the neurotoxin, and I'm assuming that it has some kind of water and CO2 byproduct as well. Whether this equation is 100% accurate, who knows? But it's the best I could come up with, so bear with me. Let's assume that Doug, the ram chemist, used 5 grams of night howler and 12 grams of isobutanol in order to extract the neurotoxin, the colchicine, 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 that one there, <laughs> to extract that chemical. Theoretically, how much could be created? So this is a limiting reactant problem because it's saying how much could theoretically be made we need to know which reactant is limiting the production of the product of interest before we can know how much can be theoretically made. So we need two dimensional analysis lines set up. Let's draw two magical lines to freedom, and our goal is the neurotoxin. I'm just going to call it neurotoxin from here on forwards because I can't. 
<laughs> C22, H25, and O6. And we're going to start with 12 grams of isobutanol and 5 grams of the night howler flower. Since this is one chemical grams going to a different chemical in grams, we're going to use our molar mass, mole ratio, molar mass setup. We need to find the molar mass of isobutanol by looking at our periodic table. We know that each carbon weighs 12.011 and there happens to be four of them. And each hydrogen weighs 1.008 and there happens to be 10 of those. And each oxygen weighs 16. So if we add up those three values together, we get 74.124 grams of isobutanol per mole of isobutanol. Now we need the mole ratio from the balanced equation. We have five moles of isobutanol to every 24 moles of the neurotoxin. Now we need the molar mass of our neurotoxin. If we look at our periodic table, each carbon weighs 12.011 and there's 22 of those, so multiply by 22. Each hydrogen weighs 1.008 and there's 25 of those, so multiply by 25. Each nitrogen weighs 14.007 and each oxygen weighs 16 and there's six of them. Add those values together and we get 399.45 grams of toxin per mole of toxin. Let's make sure all of our units cancel. So grams here, moles, and mole of toxin. Great, we are left with the correct units and chemical. Let's multiply and divide. We're gonna multiply 12 by one by 24 by 399.45 and divide that all by 74.124 times 5 times 1. And our final answer is 310.403 grams of neurotoxin could be made with 12 grams of isobutanol. Let's check out how much we can make with the night howler. Just as before, we need to find the molar mass of night howler. So for every carbon, there's 12.011, and there happens to be 20 of those in this molecule. There are 24 hydrogens weighing at 1.008 each. There's one nitrogen at 14.007, and there are four oxygens weighing 16 each. Add those values together. And the molar mass of the night howler flower happens to be 342.419 grams of the flower. I'm just gonna call it flower for every mole of the flower. Looking back up at our balanced chemical equation, we can see that there are 24 moles of night howler for every 24 moles of toxin produced. So we have a 24 to 24 mole ratio. The goal mole goes on top, 24 moles of the toxin to 24 moles of the flower. And just as before, this part of the equation is going to be the exact same. So 399.45 grams of the toxin in every mole of the toxin. Always check to make sure your units cancel correctly. Grams of flour, grams of flour, moles of flour, moles of toxin. Cool. We did it right. We can now plug and check. Multiply your 5 by your 1 by your 24 by 399.45 and divide that by 342.419 times 24 times 1. And your final answer is 5.8 three grams of toxin can be produced with five grams of night howler flower. When we compare these two values, we see clearly that 5.83 is much smaller than 310.403. Therefore, we can conclude that the limiting reactant here is the night howler flower, which makes a lot of sense because that's where the toxin's actually coming from coming out of the flower. The next part of this question is asking us for how much excess is left over in grams. Well, we do know which one is the limiting reactant now, our LR, and by process of elimination, we can therefore say that the isobutanol is our ER, our excess reactant, and we know that theoretically, according to our limiting reactant, the one that gets used up entirely in the chemical reaction, we can make a maximum of 5.83 grams of our neurotoxin. So now we need to figure out, well, how much of the isobutanol is left over that didn't react with the night howler flower. All we got to do is draw another magical line to freedom. And now our goal unit instead of the product is going to be the grams of our excess reactant, which happens to be the isobutanol. That's the C4H10O. And we're gonna have our given be the limiting reactant, the amount of night howler we started with, which was five grams of C20H24, NO4. Luckily, we already calculated the molar masses for this before, and it's going to be the same setup. Molar mass of the given, mole ratio to convert from one chemical to the other, and then molar mass of 
the goal, our isobutanol. So let's just take our values from before and plug it in for the molar mass of our night howler. We have 342.419 grams of the flour in every mole of the flour. Our mole ratio this time is going to be the goal mole over the mole we're trying to get rid of. So 24 moles of the flour, which is the limiting reactant, for every five moles of the isobutanol excess reactant. And now the molar mass of our isobutanol, which again we already calculated previously, to be 74.124 grams of the isobutanol per mole of isobutanol. Let's make sure those units cancel. We've got grams of flour gone, moles of flour gone, moles of isobutanol gone. We do have the correct units in the end, so now we can calculate. We'll take our five times one times five times 74.124, all divided by 342.419 times 24 times one. And we see that our final answer is 0 0.225 grams of excess reactant or isobutanol was actually used. So literally less than a quarter of grams of isobutanol were used with the night howler flour to extract our neurotoxin. So then how much is left over? Well, if we started with 12 grams of isobutanol, we just have to take 12 minus how much was used to figure out how much is left over. So 12 minus 0.225 gives us a value of 11.77 grams of C4H10O that's left over in excess. Let's jump back into another percent yield, because why not? We just learned it. Let's apply it. So we know theoretically a maximum amount of toxin we could make is 5.83 grams. Let's assume that Doug, the RAM chemist, only extracted 2.12 grams of the neurotoxin. From his chemical extraction. The actual from his lab data would be 2.12 grams, what he actually extracted in the lab. Theoretically, he should have been able to extract 5.83 grams. Naughty Doug, you weren't very diligent in your lab, were ya? So we're gonna take our actual, our 2.12, divide it by our theoretical, 5.83, and multiply that by 100 to figure out what Doug's percent yield was. If this were the case, Doug's percent yield would be a mere 36.36 percent. Wop wop. Here's your blast from the past problem, and we're going to figure out the percent composition of each atom present in the neurotoxin. We have carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. First, we want to figure out what the molar mass of the entire molecule is. We know that there's 12.011 grams for every carbon, and there happens to be 22 of them, just as we calculated before. There's 1.008 mass for each hydrogen, and there's 25 of those. There's nitrogen, there's only one of them, an invisible one is implied, and each nitrogen weighs 14.007. And there's six oxygens weighing 16 grams each. Let's add up all of these for our overall molar mass of the compound to be 399.449 grams per mole for the neurotoxin. Now we want to figure out, well, how much of each atom is present in that? Well, this is our total, and these are our pieces. And we know if we're trying to find a percent of anything, like a percent composition, we have to take the part or the piece divided by the whole or the total. So all we're going to do is figure out what 12.011 times 22 is, and we see that that's 264.242. That's the piece. Divide that by the whole, 399.449. Let's do the same for the rest of them. 1.008 times 25 is 25.2 divided by the same total or whole. There's only one nitrogen, so we're just gonna take 14.007 and divide it by the whole. And last but not least, we have 16 times six, that's 96, divided by the whole. Go ahead and plug those divisions into your calculator. Few moments later. Now you've got decimals and we need percents, hence the whole percent comp thing. So we need to multiply each of these by 100. And when we do that, we're essentially moving the decimal over two spaces. So one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. So for oxygen, we have 24% oxygen. We have 3.5% nitrogen. We have 6.3% hydrogen. 
and we have 66.15% carbon. That's your percent comp of your neurotoxin. I hope you enjoyed this chemical application to Zootopia. Please give this video a quacks up. Subscribe to the Decanta channel because here it's okay to get hooked on quack. Hope your day is just ducky. No ducks, no glory.